back with a third and two for New Hampshire. 9.42 to play here in this third frame from Wildcat Stadium. Joined by Brian Espinet. I'm Cameron Beal. New Hampshire, four of nine on third downs today. They came into the day converting on 44% of third downs, which ranked fifth of the 15 teams in the CAA. See what they can do here. Lepkowski was a guy you wanted to see more of going into the break. He had that last catch to bring up the third and short. Expect some sort of motion if they don't pound it here. Yep, they're going loaded back. Bill probably going to motion a guy out. Or everybody. Three men initially in the backfield with Brosmer. They motion everyone to the right. Out to Burke. Lincoln's with the lead block. Burke up to the 45, and it looks like he's just a few yards short. Not sure he gained anything on that one. Got to bring up a fourth and two. Got to go. New Hampshire 0 for 1 on fourth downs today. And we'll see, they motioned everyone to the right. The throw just a little low to Caleb Burke. Couldn't quite catch it and go. They load up the left side here. Fourth and two. Brosmer keeps it as a seam up the middle. Tumbles down for a first down. What a great read. That's, that's tight right off the DN. You're going to have a great look at it here. DN could have made both the plays in one, but it's just like coming off a screen in basketball. Great to see him get the fourth down, fourth and short. And despite Lauby not being super productive on the ground today, that's why you give him those rushes to start the half, to bait the defense in a little and set up a play like that. That's why you keep him in, for sure. Classic decoy on that play. Lauby stays in to block. Brosmer barely gets it away. Might have been tipped on the way out. Was intended for Tomlinson. Bring up second down. I haven't subbed, subbed much here in the second half. Look for them to hurry up. They've gotten on the ball quick the last couple plays, trying to, trying to cut this lead, leave some time on the clock, get back in the regular offense. Once again, loading up the left side, Anton Junkaj, the far defensive end for Albany, A.J. Simon, the near side. Junkaj breaks free. They get it to Lauby out of the backfield. Breaks two tackles, and he's got room to go. Spins out of another. Lauby scutters down for a first down. Can't hold him down, can't silence him. Even when he's a little banged up, he'll still make plays like this. One tackle, two tackle, three tackles, and eventually just kind of slides down himself. They give it to him. Anton Junkaj was the first in there for the tackle, gain of maybe one. It's a great job on the last screen by, by right guard Matt O'Neill, number 73. He's probably, in, in, in my eyes, one of the most underrated guys in the league just because he, he's been healthy, he's been consistent. He, he's, he's good in pass pro, but he, he, he's fast, he's quick. He's a baseball player in high school. He's, he's able to pull the, the, the icing on the cake last year against Fordham. Dylan runs right off, right off of Oney, and he, he's been that rock of the offensive line. Brosmer gliding right. Checks it down to the running back. That's Miles Thomason, who's cycling down for a stop. Not much of a gain there. Going back to right guard Matt O'Neill. Coach Santos said he was one of the most improved guys on the team over the offseason. Lost about 10 to 15 pounds. He said he's more muscular, better moving, more athletic, like you said. So not a guy who gets a lot of shine up there at right guard, but certainly recognized by his peers. Locker room guy too. Oni was Oni was a guy they looked forward to seeing, hanging out with, and but yeah, he's just was what a great career he's had as well. Third and seven from the 19. Brosmer takes a shotgun snap. The ends closing in. Has lobby as his safety hatch, and he's got room to go. Met at the three yard line and shoved out of bounds. That'll set New Hampshire up with a first and goal. Just feed him, let him go to work. Acting like he's in pass pro, just leak out. And, and, and sometimes that's all you need for, for for your offense. That's all you need is a spark. Is just a simple, is just fake fake the run. Act, act, like, act like he's in pass pro. Leak him out. Get him in the flat. A give once again to Lobby, and he's going to be backed up here. They'll mark him down back at the six, maybe the five. Loss of a couple. They'll bring up second down. If you're New Hampshire, I think anything besides a touchdown here will feel a little disappointing, like you left something on the table because they've got to start coming back. They know what the offensive is capable of, one of the best units in the country. 
and they've got to start putting some points on the board here. Well, they're showing they can march. They just that's been the, the mo of the whole entire game. They just got to finish, get the, get six here, get seven, cut the lead down to three. Isaac Seed to Brosmer's left, Lauby to the right. The give to Lauby, who runs in, touchdown, UNH. What a cut. Needed that one. We saw it on the last couple of plays. UNH kind of sending the backs in motion either way to create some sort of confusion on the defensive end, and it did there. Right off Matt O'Neill, just like we were alluding to before. Oni in space can move, can can really move for a big dude, and I, and, and I think Dylan looks for him, kind of like a quarterback looks for a receiver. I think Dylan looks for Matt O'Neill to run off of a lot of the time, especially in plays when he's pulling, running power. McMazie, 23 converted extra points this year. Let's make it 24.